the revision coming along. Let's power up a mercy, O G, and lighten your revision load. You and I have got five minutes to sort out cervical ectopic pregnancy. Cervical ectopics are rare, less than 1% of all ectopics. But when you have got one, you need to be able to see it, that is, diagnose it, and then, of course, manage it. So question number one, how do you diagnose a cervical ectopic pregnancy? Ultrasound is your friend for diagnosis, and you want to avoid two misdiagnoses. First, mistaking a low intrauterine pregnancy for cervical pregnancy, and the second is mistaking a miscarriage pregnancy sac passing through the cervical canal for an ectopic pregnancy. What ultrasound features do you look for to diagnose a cervical pregnancy? RCOG tells you to look for five ultrasound features. The first is an empty uterine cavity. The second is a barrel-shaped cervix. The third is a gestational sac below the level of the internal os. The fourth is the absence of the sliding sign. I think this is really important. Sliding sign is when you apply some pressure with your transvaginal ultrasound probe. If it's a miscarriage, then the sac moves within the cervical canal. But if it's an implanted cervical pregnancy, then it does not move. The fifth ultrasound feature is blood flow around the gestational sac, and that you can do using color Doppler. Don't forget to do a serum beta HCG as part of the diagnostic workup. Diagnosis done, how do you retreat? The preferred method for cervical ectopic pregnancy is medical management with methotrexate. It is about 90% effective. It is likely to work if the gestational age is less than 10 weeks. CRL, the crown rump length, is less than one centimeter. There is no fetal heart and the beta HCG level is less than 10,000. There is no clear protocol on how to use methotrexate. Local injection of potassium chloride may be necessary if there is a fetal heart. Surgery in the form of dilatation and curettage used to be the traditional way of treating cervical ectopic, but it is associated with high failure rate and risk of severe hemorrhage. The hemorrhage may even necessitate a hysterectomy. More recently, there are case reports of safe hysteroscopic resection of cervical pregnancy. We need further evidence on this. To control bleeding from cervical pregnancy, clinicians have tried tamponade balloons, uterine artery ligation, and uterine artery embolization. Question number four, what do you do when you have a tricky cervical ectopic pregnancy? By that, I mean a live cervical ectopic pregnancy or the HCG level is very high, for example, over 10,000, or you are thinking of surgery. Obviously, this is getting very tricky, and you know what I say. When it gets tricky, take it to an MDT, or of course, you can refer to a regional specialist center. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do come back for more. Goodbye for now. Thank you.